let in it. If you're able to, if you want to, you can stand with us on our opening song. Our God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty Creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one and three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time we invite our children forward. We're about double the number of last week, which is great to see. So we'll have at least four of you this morning. You know we haven't sat down for a children's message in ages, have we? Let's go ahead and sit on the floor today. And the uh, first question I have for you is, Anybody know what a matro, matrosha doll is? I'm probably mispronouncing it. It's a special doll from Russia. Doesn't ring a bell? Well, I'm going to show you one here today. If it's still here. You see it? Did I get it? You need your help. There it is. Have you seen this kind of doll before? You don't recognize it? You do. There's something. Go ahead, Becky. You've seen it before. It's a big doll. It's a, it's a woman. And they're generally a picture of a woman. And a woman, if I understand correctly, in Russian is called a babushka. So you could also call it a babushka doll. But this is kind of an unusual one. It, it opens up. Damien, can you open it and see what happens? Just twist it off. Oh, there's another one underneath. Hand that one to Zuri. Can you open that one too? It does, and there's one. So you keep the one you open and pass the other one to Becky. There can't be another one in there, can there? No, it doesn't open, does it? It does open. Looky there. There's a doll for everybody this morning. <laughs> kind of neat about that Russian doll. It's like it's one doll, but actually it's four dolls when you count them all from the inside. We mentioned in the prayers today that it's Holy Trinity Sunday that God comes to us in three ways, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I thought, that's kind of like this in a way. You have the one big one that Damien has. Here's God. But when you open God up, in a sense, you see three ways that God acts. As Father, as Son, and as Spirit, but still one God. When you think of God as Father, can you think of anything that God the Father does for us? For anything God the Father has done. Think early times. The earliest when the earth was around, wasn't around me, there it was chaos. Did somebody put the earth together in a way? Who was that? God. We usually refer to that as God the Father. So God's work is creation. God keeps creating. God didn't just create then. God is still creating. When you think of the Son, whose name is Jesus, what did Jesus do? Gave his life for our sins. Anything else, Zuri, that you think of that Jesus did? He gives us life. Gives us our sins by gave his life, and he gives us life. Wonderful. And the last one, now, in our fancy talk, we say all those three persons are equal in one. But we have today in the babushkas, the spirit is the littlest one of all. When you think of God the Spirit, remember last Sunday we celebrated God the Spirit. You remember anything we said that the Spirit does for us? Think of any ideas? That's your clue. Spirit blows off, but what does the spirit blow on us? Came down in baptism, exactly, and God breathed, this, God breathed on the earth when creation came, and God breathes on us in baptism. The spirit continues to breathe on us today. So one of the things God breathes on us is the gifts, the abilities and talents we have to serve God in the world have been breathed on us 
by God's Spirit. So that will be our emphasis in the adult sermon as well today. Uh, can you put God back together? I mean the babushka back together. Can you put those babushkas back together? There's a wonderful puzzle piece that says, it's a story about, uh, get carried away here, but there's a story about a, a little kid and uh, the father gives him a puzzle and asks him to put together a puzzle all 50 states. He knows this little kid can't put it together. And he comes back and looks at the puzzle's done. He says, how in the world do you do that? So when I turned over the pieces, there was a picture of Jesus on there. So I just put Jesus together and everything came out okay. That, uh, Jesus has a big effect on us in life. Does so anybody remember the name of this doll before we quit? Babushka is the woman, and the fancy name I think is Matroshka. Somebody study that this afternoon. Mary Loving, are you here today? Mary's always good at checking Google and pronunciation. So if you hear a funny sound during the sermon, that's Mary figuring out how to pronounce Matroshka. Let us pray this morning. <laughs> Lord, we give you thanks that you come to us as creator, as one who saves, and as one who makes us holy. We thank you that you come to us, and you know you come to us in more ways than that, but those are the three that we've lifted up as a church for centuries. And we thank you that your love as it stands to us. It's just so wonderful to see the children this morning as summer is upon us. We pray for them as in the next couple of weeks uh, we prepare for our vacation Bible school, our summer camp here, June 14th. We pray that you will guide the leaders and the volunteers and that these children will take the time to invite hopefully at least one friend to come with them and maybe two or more. So we pray for that outreach into the world around us to share that love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. I like it better when we meet on the floor, don't you? It just feels better. It feels, there's a certain feeling I like when we're standing and walking around. Okay, we won't never get to the whole sermon if I keep talking. Okay, we continue with the lessons of the church. That be you, Rudy? You're up. Okay. This morning's uh, first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each of six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet. And with two they flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. <clears throat> the pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live, live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin has blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll read it Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord our heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord most strength. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. You make Lebanon skip like a cat, and Syria like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth 
flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness. Amen. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned on his king forever. I guess we could read that together, really. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Okay. The second uh, lesson for this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death, to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Before we rise for the gospel acclamation, Mike, if you can bring forward the clicker. I'll need the little clicker for the message. Morning, taking a few steps as we bring that forward. Let us rise as we sing together our gospel acclamation. except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to each of you from Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 
You might recognize that text. I want to say Kathy preached on that text. Was that back in Lent? Sometimes. Kind of reminds me that was a text we had back in Lent, but it was for this year B in the lectionary that comes up as a uh, Holy Trinity lesson as well. Charles Schultz, creator and author of the Peanuts cartoon characters, often conveys a Christian message in his comic strips. In one strip, he conveys through Charlie Brown the need we have to be loved and through Lucy, our inability to love one another. Charlie Brown and Lucy are leaning over the proverbial fence, speaking to one another. Charlie, all it would take to make me happy is to have someone say she likes me. Lucy, are you sure? <laughs> of course I'm sure. You mean you'd be happy if someone merely said he or she likes you? Do you mean to tell me that someone has it within his or her power to make you happy merely by doing such a simple thing? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Well, I don't think that's asking too much. I really don't. But you're sure now. All you want is to have someone say, I like you, Charlie Brown, and then you'll be happy. And then I'll be happy. Lucy turns and walks away saying, I can't do it. <laughs> <coughs> what Lucy cannot do, sinful as she is, God does. What Charlie Brown needs, lost and alone as he is, God supplies. God loves you and is telling you today, he loves you. God loves us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate that triple love. In baseball, a triple is the rarest of feats. Singles are a plenty. Doubles abound. And home runs come in bunches. But triples are few and far between. Such is God's love for us. A level of loving that is near impossible for us to achieve, but by the grace of God's Spirit. This Trinity, this three in one, we call a mystery. We can't explain it or understand it in our earthly limitations. We can only accept, believe, and experience it by faith. A first-year seminarian got his first opportunity to preach at his fieldwork congregation on Holy Trinity Sunday. He knew it was a special festival on a doctrine of the church, and he wanted to do his best with a difficult subject. He studied and studied, and the big day finally arrived. He went into the pulpit and delivered what he felt was an excellent sermon on the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. At the end of the service, he got the expected congratulations from the people in the congregation at the exit doors. Finally, a small, older lady who was recognized as being what very wise and well-respected came forward. The young seminarian was excited to hear her response. She began, I never really understood the Holy Trinity before. The seminarian could barely control his emotions, waiting for the response of new discovery by the older woman from his sermon. She continued, After today, I see you don't understand the Trinity either. <laughs> Such is the doctrine of the Trinity. We can't understand it, but we can sure experience its benefits for us and be thankful for what the three persons of the Trinity do for us. We have been created in God's image and blessed with the beauties of the whole universe. We've been redeemed and saved by God's Son who sets us free from sin, death, and the devil. That same Jesus who shows us how to live and gives us the power to live that way through the gift of His Spirit. The same spirit who we celebrated last week on Pentecost. 
we are truly blessed and in turn bring blessing to others. Here's how another person described the Holy Trinity. When you pray, how do you think of God? What words do you use? Almighty God, merciful creator, Lord Jesus are only a few ways of addressing God. We need more than one title because no one description is sufficient. At the same time, we do not believe that ways of understanding God are limitless. Today, as we celebrate the Holy Trinity, we acknowledge both the complexity of God and God's distinct identity. The word Trinity never appears in the Bible. But John 3, 1 through 17 is a good example of why Christians use the term. Jesus speaks of God's love for the world in giving the Son. Jesus himself will die so that people will not perish. Jesus describes the work of the Spirit to Nicodemus. Like the wind, the Spirit blows where it chooses, creating faith. God has identity as creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Yet more is at stake in the Trinity than how God acts. We also see that the essence of God is an inclusive community. The intimate relationship of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. To be born from above is to become a part of this oneness. Today we contemplate who God is and see one who stretches our understanding to the limit. We cannot grasp God. Yet this great God reaches out directly to individuals like Nicodemus and like us. Through God's word, God speaks so that we may believe and have eternal life. I love starting most tradi traditional services with the greeting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This greeting bestows on us the grace or Jesus' free gift we cannot earn, but only respond to. This greeting also gives to us that unconditional love of God, agape, a love the world cannot understand, but can only receive and live into. Finally, the greeting creates us for community in the Holy Spirit, with God and with each other. It is that community or communion which makes us holy. As we baptize and are baptized, the liturgy reminds us. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. No, we don't understand it all, but we sure give thanks to God for the benefits that the Trinity gives to us. Another benefit to lift up is from our second lesson in Paul's letter to the Romans. There Paul instructs his listeners that as children of God, we have been adopted to be a part of God's family, the Trinity included. Now we can call God Abba or Daddy. This new relationship makes us heirs with Christ, both in suffering and in glory. Whatever is coming to Christ is coming to us. As he entered into his glory through suffering, so must we. Andre Rublev's 15th century icon of the Trinity holds a wealth of symbols to help us talk about the triune God in metaphorical but specific ways. The Trinity here is depicted as the three visitors to Abraham in Genesis 18, who symbolize from left to right the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each person of the Trinity gestures to the next in a circle, yet the circle is open in front to include our participation as well. 
Behind the Father is a house with open doors. Behind the Son is a tree calling to mind the cross. And behind the Spirit is a mountain. The table they are gathered around resembles a communion table holding a chalice. In summary, the Trinity above all is about loving relationships. Among and between the persons of the Trinity, between God and humankind, and between Christians. We have been loved, rescued, and led by a nurturing, redeeming, and inspiring God. We close with an alternate prayer of the day, which we didn't use earlier. I'd like you to pray that with me. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed, <coughs> and rejoice all that Christ has Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We rise to sing our sermon song, We Believe in God the Father, all like you.
I think the hours are starting to catch up with me. We literally thought we were losing her this morning. The girls got up at different times during the night, half and spent the night with us. And this morning at 6, they called me in thinking this was it. Just the way she was responding and not responding. And from about 6 to 8, almost seemed like she was in a coma. So I did my pastoral duties as where the sun duties to uh, go through Bible verses and prayers. And about 8 o'clock when I came in, she kind of came back and started talking again after we got both brothers on the phone and stuff. And as far as I know, she's still kicking this morning, but uh, we finally did call hospice this morning to get a hospice care for her. And as you know, hospice is not just for the patient, but it's also for the family. So I think uh, hospice will help all of us as siblings and others. Now, so let's, can, Kathy's going to make one on BBS, but Kenneth, I didn't get today when you the guy said this is your last Sunday, and you said something I didn't understand. I will be here in the summer if, if John needs to. Oh, okay, okay. So we still, this is Kenneth's last Sunday as our hired gun for contemporary worship. And so Kenneth, just on behalf of the whole congregation, I mean personally, how many years have you been here? Is it like seven at least? I don't think it's 10, but it must be pushing. That's between 5 and 10 somewhere. And just how much we enjoy you. Thank you, sir. How much we enjoy you. I don't remember which turmoil it was. If it was the pandemic or something else that you got me through. I was down for weeks in your prayers and your words of comfort and carried me through that time. So we thank God that the Holy Spirit worked through you during that time. And uh, Kenneth, we don't want you to move on anywhere. Keep staying, keep staying here with us. And uh, John, hopefully you'll take a couple Sundays off this summer so we can get Ken back before next end of August. Um, I didn't realize that the Senate Assembly online next week would happen during Sunday morning. I thought I'd be with you, but it turned out we'll be online. Lori and Angelo and I from three different locations, but there's, it goes on during the worship time. And so fortunately, we have Kathy Graham around, who literally became a member silently as a council voted her in a month or so ago. And Kathy has been helping in so many ways, not just preaching, but she will lead worship next week. But at this point, she doesn't have permission to officiate communion. So we're going to flip communion Sundays to the second and fourth Sunday this month. So no communion next week, but whatever the second Sunday of June is. We'll do that. And then the other big announcement, not just for your pastor, but for all of you, is starting next Sunday when church finishes, if you want to stay and go over to the fellowship at all and have coffee and snacks, you will be able to do that. We're going to break that. We had the memorial yesterday, and they left up, I don't know if you can see, over the counter area, it says celebrate. They left that up. So next week we'll keep that up so we can celebrate our uh, fellowship together. Kathy, please come to the mic. I know you have a strong voice, but I think it still helps everyone if you use the mic. I feel more comfortable down here, though. You know? I'm so excited. You know, we have a lot of reason to celebrate. Um, and I get to talk about my favorite reason these days anyway. June 14th, 15th, and 16th, kids. Put that on your calendar, circle it in big red so that you and your parents can all get prepared. We're gonna gather here in the sanctuary and Miss Dawn is gonna lead us in music and message and Pastor Steve is gonna tell a story and we're going to spend some time together making matchstick crosses. And uh, Steve, I have to tell you that most of the people who are donating matches are going to have them burned, so you won't have a chance What's to What's that burn. big word you're talking? Pyro? Pyromaniac. I wanted to be a pyromaniac. <laughs> the volunteers came forward. Today it's important to let you know that we need volunteers. Okay, fortunately, Kathy and I have already chatted for a second. Kathy Bush is going to help in the snack department, and she probably will need another adult or so, plus youth to help. 
and I have a list of volunteers that I need. So between Don and I and Pastor Steve, um, if you don't hear from us and you want to volunteer, please get in touch with us. It is important. But the one thing I want to say is that we are hoping to make this year's VBS an intergenerational event. So if you're mom and dad and you come and you hang around anyway, you might want to step into the craft room and help the kids glue the matches on the cross. You might want to sit in on the small group and help the leader there. Um, or you may just want to be here for moral support for all of us. Um, and so please talk to one of the three of us. Uh, it's important that we pull this off. This is important not only for the little ones, our littlest saints, but we all grow during that week. And so with that, I'm done. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> we will rise to sing our closing Trinity song before the dismissal. <clears throat>